Welcome to Weather Basics, Pressure and Fronts. In this topic, we will look at air pressure, how it works, the different types of fronts, and what kind of weather they will bring, and then briefly look at air masses. Let's start with pressure. The atmosphere is made up of atoms and molecules, which are always moving. Despite their very small size, when they hit something, they exert a pressure. Air pressure is the force exerted by the weight of a column of air above a particular location. At the Earth's surface, this is 14.7 pounds per square inch, also known as PSI. In meteorology, pressure is measured in millibars or inches of mercury. Temperature has an effect on pressure. On the left, we have a column of air. If we warm this column but keep the pressure the same, the column will expand as the molecules become more energetic. Conversely, if we cool the air, keeping the pressure constant, the volume will decrease as the air molecules become more lethargic. So, same pressure but different volumes because of the temperature change. Adding mass or removing it also has an effect on pressure. Again, let's look at our column of air on the left at a standard atmospheric pressure. If we add mass to this column but keep the volume the same, the air pressure increases while the temperature also increases due to more molecular interaction. Basically, the more molecules and the faster they move, the warmer it will get. Now let's remove some mass, again keeping the volume the same. The air pressure decreases and the air cools as there are fewer molecules to bump into each other. So changes in mass, keep the volume the same, results in different pressure and temperature. Now let's look at high pressure and how it relates to weather. First, let's look at how high pressure, represented on weather maps by a blue H, works in the vertical. Air is heavier and sinks in the middle of high pressure. As a result, air moves out from the center of the high. In the horizontal, we see air moving away from the high center. However, the air doesn't move straight out. It actually curves, turning to the right. So the circulation around an area of high pressure is clockwise. Why is this? This is the result of the Coriolis force. The Coriolis force causes an apparent deflection of the wind because of the rotation of the Earth. In the northern hemisphere, the deflection is to the right. In the southern hemisphere, it's to the left. High pressure is usually associated with clear and quiet weather. Low pressure is represented by a red L on weather maps, so let's see how this operates in the vertical. Air is drawn into the area of low pressure and then rises in the center of the low, exiting aloft. In the horizontal, we see the air moving into the low. Again though, the Coriolis force will turn these winds to the right, so the winds turn counterclockwise around an area of low pressure. Usually, low pressure systems bring clouds and breezier conditions. Precipitation is also fairly common. Now let's examine fronts, the various types, and the weather they can bring. Fronts are boundaries between two air masses of different temperature and density. In the horizontal, when two air masses meet, the warm air rises above the cooler, dense air. Fronts are usually associated with an area of low pressure. Clouds and precipitation often accompany fronts. When a front passes, wind directions will change, temperatures will fall or climb, as will the pressure, and moisture may increase or decrease, all depending on what type of front moves in. So let's take a look at these frontal types. Cold fronts occur when a colder air mass replaces a warm one. Precipitation usually accompanies a cold front. A warm front is a boundary where warm air is replacing cold air. Clouds and broad areas of precipitation can form ahead of a warm front. Stationary fronts act similar to a warm front, although the temperature change on either side of the front is usually not large. Occluded fronts form when cold, cool, and warm airs collide. Occluded fronts usually indicate a storm system that is starting to weaken. Cold fronts are represented by a blue line with triangles called barbs on a weather map. The barbs point in the direction the front is moving. Cold fronts are almost always associated with an area of low pressure. On the head of the front, the winds are from the south with west and northwest winds behind the front. Warm air surges ahead of the front with colder air dropping behind it. Look for falling temperatures as the cold front moves through, sometimes as much as 5 to 10 degrees in an hour. With the warm air comes more moisture, while the colder air ushers in drier conditions. Factoring all these together, the atmosphere is ripe for shower and potentially thunderstorm development, 
or of course, snow if it's cold enough. Let's look at cold fronts again, but this time in the horizontal. Here we have a cold front advancing from the west into a warmer air mass to the east. The dome of cold, dense air causes the warm air to rise above it. This rising motion can lead to clouds and possibly precipitation. On the weather map, warm fronts are represented by a red line with semicircles on them called cusps pointed in the direction the front is moving. South winds are located behind the front, moving it along, while easterly winds are located ahead of it. It's a warm southerly wind with a cooler easterly flow ahead of it. Look for rising temperatures with a warm frontal passage. Moisture will come with this warmer air mass with drier air associated with the cooler air mass. These conditions altogether provide clouds and possibly some precipitation ahead of the warm front, while warm and humid and clear conditions will be located behind it. In a horizontal view, we'll look at warm air advancing northward into colder air. The colder air is being overtaken by the warm air, but because the warm air is less dense, it will hit the colder air and rise above it. The rising air can lead to clouds and possibly some precipitation. Even a few thunderstorms could occur along the boundary itself. Stationary fronts are depicted by alternating segments of warm and cold fronts with the barbs and cusps pointing in the direction away from the cold and warm air, respectively. Winds generally run parallel to a stationary front, with mild and moist air on the warm side and cool and dry air on the colder side. The temperature change is not very large on either side of the front. Stationary fronts act much like a warm front in the respect that clouds and possibly precipitation are favored on the cool side of the front. Occluded fronts develop as a cold front overtakes a warm front. In general, cold fronts move faster than warm fronts. So let's take a look at this low pressure system with accompanying cold and warm front. Note the warm, cold, and cool air. As it moves east, the colder air behind the cold front runs into the cooler air north of the warm front, and whatever air mass is colder undercuts the other. The boundary forms the occlusion, represented by the purple line with cusps and barbs pointing in the direction of the movement. The low, meanwhile, rides this occlusion back to the northwest. The cold and warm front acts as one would expect, while along the occlusion, widespread clouds form along with some precipitation. Also, due to the air being wrapped counterclockwise around the low, the cloud shield will usually extend well west and southwest to the low center. Some areas of precipitation will also be possible. Since we now know that fronts are boundaries between different air masses, Let's investigate air masses a bit more. Air masses are large volumes of air, usually thousands of miles across. They have horizontal uniform properties in terms of temperature and moisture. Air masses acquire their properties from spending days to weeks over the same part of the Earth. There are continental air masses, originating over land and are generally dry. And there are maritime air masses, originating over water and generally wet. These air masses can be broken up further by temperatures and region. There's tropical, a warm air mass near the equator. Polar, a cold air mass originating north of the 40 degree latitude. And Arctic, very cold and coming from the Arctic Circle. Now we can combine these different air masses to form five basic types. Maritime tropical, warm with ample moisture. Continental tropical, hot and very dry. Maritime polar, cool and moist. Continental polar, cool and dry. And continental arctic, extremely cold and very dry. Let's try a few questions. What was the lowest surface pressure ever recorded? Was it 850 millibars, 917, or 931? It was 850 millibars, and that was measured in a tornado near Manchester, South Dakota. What was the highest surface pressure ever recorded? 1066, 1086, or 1094? 1086 is the record, and it was measured in Mongolia back in December of 2001. How about this one? If the wind is at your back, where is the area of low pressure? Is it to your left, ahead of you, behind you, or to your right? If you said to your left, you are correct. Wind blows counterclockwise around an area of low pressure, so if the wind is hitting your back, in most cases the center of the low will be off to your left. 
Severe weather is most commonly associated with this type of front. A warm front, stationary, occluded, or cold. Cold is the answer. The clash of cold air with warm and moist air can trigger thunderstorms, and if conditions are right, severe thunderstorms. If there are widespread low clouds, patchy drizzle, and some fog, what type of front is probably nearby? Would it be a warm front, stationary, occluded, or a cold front? It's most likely a warm front. Warm air rising across the warm front into cold air can lead to widespread low clouds and possibly some fog or precipitation. However, it could also be a stationary front, as stationary fronts can act like warm fronts. So what did we learn? There are four types of fronts. A cold front has warm air ahead of it and colder air behind it. They often produce storms and precipitation. A warm front has cool east winds ahead of it with a warmer southerly flow behind it. Clouds and light precipitation are often located ahead of it. A stationary front has winds running parallel to it. Like warm fronts, clouds and precipitation are usually found on the cool side of the front. Occluded fronts develop when warm, cool, and cold air comes together. An occlusion usually indicates a storm system that is weakening. Air masses are large volumes of air that have relatively uniform properties of temperature and moisture. There are five main types. Continental Arctic, Continental Polar, Maritime Polar, Continental Tropical, and Maritime Tropical. Winds flow away from high pressure in a clockwise direction. Highs are usually associated with clear and quiet weather. Winds move toward low pressure in a counterclockwise direction. Lows are usually associated with cloudy and breezy conditions, and precipitation often accompanies them. For further information on any of the topics we have discussed, here's a listing of some good resources.